Hey, this is Anthony Cesari with SuccessFearSongs.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at a sneaky technique for keeping your melodies interesting as you move from section to section throughout your song. And uh, what you'll be listening to here is a discussion I had with Berkeley College of Music instructor Shane Adams on that topic. And he has some pretty good insight on this topic, so I'll let you check that out now. You know, I have, I have a really sneaky... Uh Technique. I like sneaky my, techniques. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That I use in my own songs, and, and, and I share with uh, with my my clients, and you know, it's one of those things I should probably keep to myself. But I, I think it's I think it's so cool. Uh, it, again, most people don't think about uh, rhythm when they're writing their melodies. You know, they just kind of sing whatever comes off the top yeah. of their head, and that's what they that's what they use. Sure. Um, uh, I call it I call it the first and last half technique, and it might be a little funky trying to explain it without a chalkboard or whiteboard. Um, but, but essentially, I, I look at my first measure of my verse and my first measure of my chorus. And counting, uh, you know, counting the beats, I try and see where the first note of my melody is when I start my melody in my verse, you know, so we'll say, you know, I'm going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, do, 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 you know, it, mm -hmm. it, that, that melody is starting on, um, one, two, three, four, and one. So it's, it's so it's, it's basically starting on beat four. Right. Um, and so in my brain, I say, okay, I, I divide the measure in half uh, where beats one and two are the first half of the measure and beats three and four are the second half of the measure. And so what I'll do is if my verse starts in the last half of the measure, then I will start my course melody in the first half of the okay. measure and, and, vice, and vice versa. Uh, again, I, what I find is, is most songwriters, they have a tendency... It's, it, it's, it's a psychological thing. They, wherever they start their melody in the verse, they have a tendency to start the melody in the same place in the chorus. So um, I, I conscientiously divide that that first measure up. And, and again, if, if I start my verse on beats one and two, in the, I'll start my chorus melody on beats three and four. And it, that that little trick, you would you'd be surprised that it creates a a tremendous amount of, of contrast, even though it sounds like, oh, you know, it's just two beats off. Right. Uh, but, uh, but, it, but it forces you to think a little bit, think a, uh, a little differently about, about, your, about your melody. And I think that's a good one because, you know, like you said, a lot of times without thinking about it, songwriters will go from verse to chorus and just start on the same beat. But I think, you know, even more than that, a lot of times people just have a tendency to always write their melodies starting on the downbeat. Oh, absolutely. So that really starts to get redundant because if everything you do, you know, verse, chorus, bridge is happening on the downbeat, and then, you know, God forbid you're using the same chords in the verse and the chorus and your your, your melody rhythm and stuff starts to sound familiar again, we fall into that boring song syndrome where just a simple trick, like you said, just starting the melody in a different half of the measure is just huge in, in actually changing up what you're doing. Absolutely, and you know, and then uh, let's say you then have a bridge. Uh, so let's say you start your verse on on the downbeat on beat one. You start your chorus melody on beat three. So then you, you still have two other notes, and plus all the upbeats for your for your bridge. And um, I, I find for your your third section, or if you're writing a bridge in your song, you know, it, it doesn't have to. Where you place it, that doesn't matter as much. But it, it, it's just nice to have, to know what you're doing, to be aware of of your surroundings and, and being aware of the personality traits of of each one of your sessions so that you can go on to, to contrast them. Because contrasting isn't necessarily doing something the opposite. Okay, so hopefully that helps you out. And if you're interested in learning a lot more songwriting techniques for writing great songs, there is a free ebook directly below this video. Just click the link and you'll be able to download it from there. So thanks for checking this out. Take care and I'll talk to you soon.